after a clear warning from the chair, a person continues to disrupt the proceedings, the chair may order the person to withdraw from the meeting. And if the person does not withdraw, the chair... Oh, you're not muted somewhere, okay? I think that might be with the lead, sorry. The chair may authorize a constable or another... Can you hear us? Is it off mute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you hear it's Philippe? actually Philippe that's making all the noise. Yeah, Philippe, so. Philippe, you are not muted. You can hear us, Mayor? Yes. Okay. 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 Wait a minute. I'm going to text him. Okay. Can I mute the person? Participant? Uh, okay. Yes. I'm sure he would really appreciate that. I just did. He's muted. Yeah, I was going to okay. Say. Not, okay. Power. Not <laughs> that thing, huh? All right. So I'm just going to finish this statement. Okay. Uh, the person with the draw, and if the person does not withdraw, the chair may authorize a constable or other officer to remove the person from the meeting. Okay. Um, roll call. Councillor Bottomley. Here. Councillor Forgy is not going to be with us tonight. Councillor Golub. Here. Councillor Taranzo. Here. Councillor DeSorger is present. We also have the mayor. I can see the mayor and Mary Byrne. And uh, Milo Warner and Diana Schindler. Okay. And, Mar and Philippe, we muted you because as you didn't seem to know that you weren't on mute. So I just wanted you to understand that. Um, approval of the minutes. We don't have minutes. Um, public comment. Okay, I'm not hearing that anybody from the public. Hi, this is yep. Yes. I think you guys are doing a great job picking apart the. I love the questions, and I love the. the and I want to good work. Be too close. Greenfield Mass. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice. That's great to hear. All right. Public hearing none. Um, motions. Appropriate. We're going to start right off the motions. Appropriate 116000 from water retained earnings to. Uh, Fiscal year 23 water debt service account. I'll take these one at a time. Okay. This, this, is, um, this is fiscal order 23-110. Upon recommendation of Mayor Wiedegardner and in accordance with Mass General Law, move that it be ordered the sum of $116,684 be appropriated from water retained earnings to the following fiscal year water debt service accounts. 61007100.5922 water MP 2022 principal $66,000. Six one zero zero seven five one zero five nine two two water MP two zero two two interest twenty seven thousand five hundred and thirty two dollars six one zero zero seven five two zero dot five nine two five water short term interest. $23,152. Balance in, which is, makes for a total of $116,684. Fiscal year water retained earnings balance is $1,543,731. Majority vote required. Can I have a second, please? Okay. So, 
on. Do you have any information on that in particular? No. Me, no. Okay. So um, we were over on that 116,684. I see Diana Schindler here. Do you have anything that you would like to say about this, um, Director Schindler? You sent information, so it's. I don't have anything to add. Okay. Provided. All right. So the budget it was budgeted for, one hundred and thirteen thousand. So the principal, we need an additional sixty six thousand, and the interest was budgeted for thirty three thousand and ninety. Original appropriation? Mm -hmm. 33090. So the additional amount required is 27532. And the short term interest, the original appropriation was 25,000, and the additional amount required is $23,152. Um, I, I will tell you from looking at the the borrowings that um, that 2020, um, what we bonded for in 2022, the interest rate was quite high. So I'm not surprised that that's up. I'm assuming that that's why uh, it looks like we owe that. Do we have any further discussion on this? Let's see what else we have? We need to give a recommendation to this to the council for tomorrow night. Thoughts? <clears throat> the other thing I'm, that I was noticing was the um, what is on the uh, the munis following that. I mean, they're 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 negligible. I believe they're like within like fifteen hundred dollars of each other. Um, but just curious as to what that might be as to why those don't um, like the first the first line is exact, but the next two lines are not quite one being a little bit higher and one being a little bit lower i don't know if there was a is that on which um which you're talking about because on the most recent munis report that we got there was no debt on that the three quarter one that i asked for there were, it was quite unusual actually actually that this was, was, on, our oh, this okay. was on our agenda the one that was with the agenda okay fine so the first the first one uh, um for the, the 710 line, um, the additional amount was requested was 66 grand, which, which matched up. Um, but then the water debt interest and the water temp interest, short term, um, those both were plus or minus. I'm trying to do math here. I mean, literally one of them is like a hundred and something dollars off. Okay. And the other one's like 1600 in our favor, actually. But I just didn't know why, just for posterity's sake, I guess. Um, for higher, higher accountability, uh, why those didn't match up. That's all. Is it just a, a, a timing of the report that's different from the timing of the printout? You mean 27532 as opposed to 27533? Is that what you mean? This is it not 27356? Yeah. No, what they're asking for is 27532. I'm just misreading that. Oh, we had a random like $177. Extra shop said. I don't think I don't think I understand what what you mean. So it 
Um, so I'm reading off of what the total water debt interest is and okay. showing a negative 27,356. Page are you on, Mike? Um, page six. Thanks. I have to turn it sideways to read yeah. it, sorry. <laughs> Like I said, am I reading the code? So three, five, six, and this is? Five, three, two. So I mean, it's literally like a hundred and something dollars off. Do you have a comment on that, Director Schindler? I guess we're gonna ask Director Schindler for that. Isn't that 177? <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm trying to look at the agenda and see. I'm not quite sure what uh, Mike's referring to, just the difference in the report. I think the amounts in the report are just what we have in the budget and what's encumbered and we don't have the correct amounts. So the amounts that I have on the sheet are the additional amounts that we need. So I'm not, I still am not sure I understand the question, but the I sheet I more, presented are the amounts that we need, the, di the differences. This one, I guess makes sense. I'm looking at it a little bit further. This one makes a little bit more sense. Like um, the offset amount, it looks like there was like a surplus on the multi-purpose line of that, the top. Um, so that might've offset it. So, I guess the other one would be the 752 account is 23152. And the only thing we're seeing on that one is the, the short term one is, um, is a straight 25 grand. Or is there, am I missing a page? I'm not, I don't think I'm missing a page. No, no, that's that's correct. There is twenty five in the account, and we need to have forty eight one fifty two. So we're asking for an additional twenty three one fifty two. If I'm again understanding you correctly, right? No, I was just saying on. I wasn't sure, seeing where the other. Like I said, the other two are showing up as negative balances, which under which is understandably why we would be needing more. But right. that that particular part of it is not showing as a negative balance. No, because we haven't spent that 25,000 yet. So it's still sitting there, but the amount that's going to be due is 48,152. So okay. we need the additional 23,152 to make the total payment of 48,152. We just don't have anything that shows us that. Is that what's, at least I'm not seeing anything. Those, on those, showing yeah, those debt service payments came from the treasurer collector. So oh. they're not in the system because what we budgeted is in the system currently. Gotcha. Yeah. How much higher was the interest rate this year, Diana? Do you know? Is it we budgeted year? we budgeted three and we ended up at four, I believe. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm in favor of sending what's needed to pay our debts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me too. So, all right. So we've made a motion and we seconded it. All those in favor. I, I okay, think. so that's a unanimous positive. Okay. Just gonna write that down. And then if someone could read the next order, I can just write the tally of this one. Okay. Is that the uh that is on the contract one? stabilization? Yeah, yep. Okay. The City Council, upon recommendation of Mayor Wiedegardner, an order to transfer from contract stabilization to Greenfield Public Schools to fund settled contracts, ordered that the Greenfield City Council transfer the sum of $375,000 from contract stabilization fund 8403 to Greenfield Public Schools salary wages accounts to fund settled contracts, two-thirds vote required. Second disorder. And okay, so the, and the balance in that is three seventy five eight two seven and sixty nine cents. So we'll have a total of eight hundred and twenty seven dollars and sixty nine cents after this. Okay, um, I'm in favor of this because we voted, not we voted, the um, the the, T, the Greenfield Public Schools. And the school committee voted in favor of this. I think that they deserve that. So, any other discussion or thoughts on this? Just a 
clarifying question. I just want to verify that this and the following motion are to settle the contract. They do not apply to the next year's budget. Just to clarify that. That's, yes, this is right. for the retro. Okay. I do have a question. I'm wondering, are there, since this is used for retro pay, do we have un any unexpired contracts currently in the city? I don't know. Does anybody know that? I'm the mayor or Diana Schindler. Do you know if there's any unexpired okay. contracts? Okay, are you talking? <laughs> yes, mayor, please go ahead. Thank you. This, this concerns school, school contracts. So um, to my knowledge, we don't have any unexpired contracts there. We are currently negotiating contracts for the city, um, for DPW, DPW central maintenance, the S unit and clerical. Clerical um, has their um, contract negotiations. Uh, we've settled, we've come to an agreement. Um, they will have to bring their contract before. They were, they were the first ones that we did. They will have to bring their contract before. But to my knowledge, no unexpired contracts. But I, I can't be sure on the city's. I'm, I'm sorry, on the school side. But I think we're all up to date. I'm pretty sure we're all up to date on the school side. That was the. Don't take that to the bank. <laughs> that was a, sorry, that was the DPW, the S unit, the clerical. They have an agreement on where they're. they're and the central maintenance is part of the DPW. Thank you. I think all told between. Um, the city and the schools, I think I was told that there are 17 unions on all. So, so it does seem to me that we're always negotiating for something. Yeah. So I couldn't name all 17, but there you go. And so further discussion on this um, transfer from contract stabilization. Nope. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that's unanimous. All right, and does somebody want to read the next one? Um, yeah, I can get this one. The City Council, upon recommendation of Mayor Weta Gardner, an order to transfer from free cash to Greenfield Public Schools on settled contracts, ordered that the Greenfield City Council transfer the sum of $206,850 from free cash to Greenfield Public Schools salaries, wages, accounts to fund settled contracts, the majority vote required. Second. Our discussion on this now, this is my understanding was <coughs> coming, we moved this into free cash, if I'm correct. I, this would be for I, the mayor or Diana. We moved um, the Medicaid reimbursements into, uh, into free cash because that wasn't into free cash and that's actually what that 206850 is, is that correct? Uh, we didn't actually move it into free cash. It actually is a receipt that is a general fund receipt. So it does close to free cash. And so it is equal to the amount that uh, we did receive from Medicaid revenue in the last fiscal year. All right. And have we, I just have a question about this. I'm in favor of it. Have we in other years reimbursed the schools for, um, what they spent on Medicaid. Do, do you happen I, to know that, Director Schindler? I do not know that. That I'd have to defer to the mayor on that. Okay. I'm, I'm unaware of what they have done in the past. Uh, mayor, please go ahead. Well, the only thing I can say is that money closes to free cash. So uh, yes, when it's necessary to use it at the school level, um, there is a process, I believe, that ultimately returns it to the schools, but it's always there in free cash for the schools, period. Okay, so it's Medicare, it's Medicare, Medicaid, Medicaid reimbursements. Medicaid reimbursements. 
and every year they have medic they've had Medicaid reimbursements. I guess my question was, yeah. um, because uh, I, I actually was told that in the past they hadn't been reimbursed for med for their Medicaid expenses, which every year somebody sent something to me about this. I was just curious. Well, they yes. um, they have been declining over years, but it's generally somewhere in that two hundred thousand dollar range. But it right. is legally able to be closed to free cash. So it, it's it legally yes. in a variety of ways. Okay. All right. All right. I just I had this actually somebody had sent this to me. That's why I was asking. Um, they had sent to me uh, that in previous years there were Medicaid reimbursements. I have them from actually from fiscal year 17 on 393, 784, 454, 769, 58, 54, fiscal year 20, 265, 703, and fiscal year 21, 190, 041. Um, they were Medicaid reimbursements, but they went to they didn't come, they went to, they would have gone into the general fund. And I don't believe the schools were reimbursed for those. You're, you're, you're right. The general, okay. I said free cash, general fund. They uh, went to, our, to, well, the, to the city's I general. See the, there was declining things and I'm not responsible for that's, any of those years up until 2020. That's, that's fine. I just wanted to, I actually just wanted to call attention to that because that was, a significant amount, but it's delightful that we're doing that this year. And thank you. I'm glad that that's going back from whence it, from the source that's spent it. So I'm in, I'm in favor of that. Does anybody have any more questions on that? Um, I would love to see the, the record on that. And I am grateful that that's coming this year, Mayor. I'm, I'm curious, I heard you say that when it's necessary, the schools have gotten it. And I guess I would argue that it's always necessary. Um, so I would I would be curious to see that that record in the past. Um, that I, do, I don't recall saying when it's necessary. In this particular case, we felt like it was a good spend that money from the general fund. Okay. All right. So all those in favor of uh, transferring this money from uh, from free cash to the public schools to fund the settled contract. Does this uh, say aye? Aye. Aye. aye? aye. Okay. That's unanimous positive. Very good. All right. Okay. So um, the next one is order number FY23129. The City Council, upon recommendation of Mayor Wiedegarten, uh, an order, Community Preservation Fund Reserves, ordered that the Greenfield City Council <coughs> reserve from Community Preservation Fund annual reserves or available funds, the amounts recommended by the Community Preser Preservation Committee for community preservation projects and other expenses with each item to be considered in a separate appropriation as follows. Reserve $144,537.19 from fiscal year 2022 Community Preservation Fund revenues for fiscal year 2022 Community Preservation Fund purposes, fiscal year 2022 annual budgeted reserve. Reserve $20,000. $648.69 from fiscal year 2022 Community Preservation Fund revenues for open space. Reserve $20,648.69 from fiscal year 2022 Community Preservation Fund revenues for historic resources. Reserve $20,648.69 from fiscal year 2022 Community Preservation Fund revenues for community housing. Majority vote required. Second that. 
second. Is there a discussion on this? There, there, I'm just going to say this. I'm sure some of you, or many of you, have been watching this, but it's put into. It was fascinating to watch actually the all the deliberations on this, but it's allocated into different uh, avenues because so much is supposed to be spent on you know open space and uh, housing. It's sort of the way it's set up in the in the original. Law. And so after this, we will be getting, because they voted on everything, it will come to us, their actual votes for our approval. That will be coming up shortly. All of those things are in, and I think they're going to be at the next, I think they will be at the May meeting. Um, that's my understanding. So this is just sending the money because it's actually collected. If I'm saying this incorrectly, please feel free to correct me, um, Diane. Um, you know, it, it's on everybody's tax bill, so it's going to go into the treasurer, and then we have to allot that. And there's a match from, I don't know what the match was from the state, but um, I think it was pretty good this year. It's not guaranteed. It was 38% in the fly. 38%? Correct. Good. Thank you. So I have a question that maybe yes. for you. Um, I know that so I'm looking at I'm I'm looking at what's in our notes, and that like you said, it doesn't include what they've actually voted on. Mm -hmm. And um, my impression was, and I haven't been had the ability to watch the meetings, and I'm just mm -hmm. heard that you have um, the bocce court, which was one of our things on the capital budget. Do you right. know if they voted? They voted in favor of that. They I, voted I in favor. That. So the funds for that will be allocated from the CPS. As long as we approve what they so approved, approved which I, you know, I can't speak for everybody, but I could imagine that we wouldn't. I'm on Disability Access Commission, and we put um, from the Handicap Parking Fund, we allocated 4500 so that there would be some sort of a match because the things that got a little bit of a match actually did better. And we only had like 6,500, I think, in the handicap parking space fund, I mean, the handicap parking fund. So we put that in and they voted to put the rest in. I couldn't imagine why we would vote against it. Um, and we had previously voted, I think, 50,000 for the bocce courts, but the access part wasn't quite there. It, it was an inaccessible path and some uh, water fountains that, you know, there, there was some accessibility issues mm -hmm. with the other half. So we put in a little bit and they matched the oh. rest. So I couldn't imagine as a council that that wouldn't happen, but it's not my place to speak for anybody else. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. They, that was definitely a little in favor okay. of that. So if they made it, voted in favor of that, then it would need to come from capital. Mm -hmm. well, well, from free cash, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion on that? Okay. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. So that is a unanimous positive, also. Okay. So, um, I just am going to play one thing from this. We're going on to you, Marlo, in one second. Okay. It's fine. Yes, you're up next, but I went back. And you know what I'm, you all know what I'm like. Okay. And watched our um, meeting of. You, you weren't there, but John and I and Chris were, uh, this is only 49 seconds, from the March 16th, 2021 meeting where we were establishing that pension stabilization fund. And I'd like you to hear what Director Gilman said. General, if you're trying, to, it's very hard to delineate what's what in 
saving the one. So if you're saying, oh no, we're saving this for capital, or no, we're saving this for contracts, you know, um, but it doesn't mean that you can't revote as council with two thirds vote to utilize it for something else. I, that, that option is always there. Um, the other thing I would say to you is another reason, not just pension stabilization, That's all. This was about, this was what we were told before we voted on that. So I went back and listened to the meeting again about repurposing money in, in a stabilization. That was before we voted. So I just wanted to clarify something that was said last week. So now, now, Marlo, you're on. Okay. And you can start. Just tell us where you're going to start so I can open my... Uh, I kind of put it in order of the budget book, and I wrote the pages where they start. Oh, okay. so great. So yeah. I just yeah. want to make sure I'm following you well. So, yeah. so it'll just go in the same order that we have it? Yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll guide you to the pages. It's the, the order I found in the, the large budget book. Okay. I got an awesome office manager who put only my stuff in a budget book for me, so I don't have to... We'll find everything. So, can I ask you a question before you start? Sure. Would you prefer us to ask you questions as they come up in relationship to the line items, or would it be? Is there like an overview, and you'd like us to wait? What's best for you? I, I anticipate on um, because I have hundreds of accounts, and a lot of them are repetitive union obligations like colon allowances, drug testing, all that stuff. <clears throat> I was going to go through and at least point out some of the major increases or decreases and then get to the end, but I don't have a problem stopping me in the middle either. It, does, it doesn't matter. Okay. So whatever you prefer. <clears throat> I think, do you mind? I think sometimes as we're going along, you sort of when you're talking about one thing, um, because it's hard, is it all right? You don't mind? Whatever you want. Okay. That's fine by me. So you're on page 70 with your um, transfer station. Is that where you're starting? Actually, yeah, the, the revolving. And then when I say 1590, it's the last four of the, um, excuse me, the, the first four of the account. Page 70 of the budget book. Um, the transfer station um, revolving fund, th this particular revolving fund, um, <clears throat> actually um, pays for two employees and their fringe benefits and, and the union obligations through union contract. Um, there's some other things in here, disposal costs, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, as far as my budget entry, there was, there was no major changes. Um, the salary stayed the same, even though we had, uh, I got union obligations because we've had a fairly significant turnover at the transfer station. So even though there was raises with one person, there was a lower pay for another. So it kind of like, well, how come that number only changed $800 for a full year? But so you'll find that throughout my whole budget and it can be confusing. Um, but um, I first wanted to start by saying um, I have, I think close to 500 accounts, not include all my revenue accounts and all six of my budgets. So uh, <clears throat> as we know, the current budget after it closed last January and it was voted on in May, uh, the world went crazy with expenditures and so on and so forth. Fuel, we remember the fuel. Mm -hmm. um, but we deal with thousands of vendors um, and costs of everything. Just about everything has gone up anywhere from 20% to 45% for vehicle parts and so on and so forth. So, so once again, what I always do is I, the general budget and all these budgets, I took one line at a time, starting back in September, October, broke them down, got the best costs I could. Um, but as we know, most, um, most distributors, so on and so forth, will not guarantee a price for more than 30 days right now. Uh, I've never seen it before on the thousands of items we purchase mm -hmm. or we deal with. So I did my best to hit what everything was at the time and then anticipate what may increase. Um, I don't expect anything to decrease. So, so that's where we landed with this uh, submitted budget on everything. Mm -hmm. um, the disposal cost, 5246, if you run down through um, the fringes and whatnot, there's a last number, 5246, disposal costs. Uh, I'm finding that the 75,000 is going to be okay for this coming year. But again, we don't, we can't anticipate what comes in at the transfer station. Am I going to get 5,000 air conditioners next year? Or am I going to get 200? We, 
uh, everything. I, I usually go back and I do a two or three year look back on all the accounts because everything moves all over the place from one year I'm negative and say 50 accounts and the next year I'm, I'm over on them 50 accounts, but everything kind of levels out bottom line at the end of the year or has been. So <clears throat> everything's anticipation. You don't know what kind of emergencies you're going to have, uh, what you're going to run into for small equipment failures, say in the vehicle maintenance shop, so on and so forth. So I try and anticipate everything ahead of time the best I can. Um, current, current budget's doing okay, all of them. So, um, so the disposal costs I kept basically the same. Uh, I actually uh, brought it down a thousand dollars. Medical physicals, that's not going to change. Materials and supplies, uh, I went up twenty five thousand. We're finding <clears throat> other things up the transfer station, small repairs that we weren't budgeted for in the past. Uh, or we run into a particular situation with a, a vehicle or a piece of equipment up, equipment up there that we have to invest a little more money in for the repair. So I did bump that to twenty five thousand. Um, that's my major increases for the fifteen ninety revolving. Uh, but the health insurance fringe on this um, the health insurance overall has gone up a total of six point five percent. And you have two employees in this. The, the, the health insurance went up 36 to, from 18 to 36. Do you put the numbers in for the health insurance? With it, or do you plug those numbers? In? Uh, those I normally don't. Um, okay. All right. I, I don't actually have the, those line items in units when I build my budgets. It's only salaries, uh, materials, and supplies. All right. So, so that fits, um, Director Shinley, do you know why the health insurance on that particular one is up to 36,000 from 18? Um, I assume that was, um, that, that just came out of our calculations for the staff in that budget. But I don't, again, I don't have that specific thing in front of me. I'm not quite sure. So you're saying it's a, it's a health insurance line in the revolving fund? It's the health insurance fringe that's actually part of the transfer station revolving. And in fiscal right. year, and it's only for two people. In fiscal year 2022, it was 13,681. Last year, it was 18,000. And this year, for those same two people, it's 46,185. And I did the math on the health insurance in general going up, and it only went up 6.5%. Uh, well, it doesn't just cover health insurance, it covers their other benefits as well. So I'm not exactly sure what's in there without looking at the detail in Munis. But basically, we calculated the health insurance, the estimate or budgeted for who we anticipate being in that budget. So that is what we anticipate for this coming year. Not just, it's not just health insurance, but group insurance costs. So that can be uh, life insurance and uh, if there's any other search costs. Okay. Well, there is another line in this for life insurance that really changed ten dollars, and then the Medicare didn't change much. But at any rate, that was a significant increase. But it is paid for for from a revolving account that then closes to the general fund, right? Closes to the general fund. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Any further questions on that? Still learning what revolving funds are. So <laughs> I, know, um, I know that I've um, yeah, read that and. So a little better description of, of this revolving fund. Um, so a revolving fund, we take in revenues in the fund as well as pay out what you see in the budget book. So just a little example, the 1590 revolving, um, the transfer station fees that we take at the window by the attendant go into that. Um, transfer station stickers, the window decals go into that, mm -hmm. this this uh, revolving account. Um, also, the uh, scrap metal, we, we uh, dispose of um, the money we get for the scrap metal goes into this account. So um, an example is right now we're um, minus 295,000. In other words, we got 290, almost 296,000 in revenue. Um, the point of this, and Diana can correct me, um, 
is we take in all these monies and it pays for these two employees and these, these benefits and whatever's left over at the end of the year transfers back to the okay. general budget. Okay. Thank you. It's a good yeah. way to, that was a yeah, good way to explain good. that. Yeah, there's revenues that offset this budget. Okay, thank you. This, on page, just FYI, on page 66, and something of all of our revolving fund, the revenues, and, ex, and it, the revenues come in, a lot of expenses are taken care of by that. Many of them close to the general fund and some are available for expenditure. So, well, onward, if there's no more questions on that, onward to your next. Uh, the same page, actually, at the very bottom, is a very small revolving fund, very quick explanation. Uh, signage revolving, we have a sign making machine at the, the DPW yard. We make all our own signs, um, all the signs you see throughout the city. This revolving uh, fund was set up because the, the machine was purchased by the FERCOG and Greenfield was the lead town slash city at the time. So other communities can come to our facility, um, get trained or they have been trained on that sign machine to make their own signs and they pay for them. So again, there's money and it hasn't been utilized, but maybe by one community in two or three years. So, but in order for me to spend out of this revolving, I have to have revenue in it. So uh, if I got $2,000 in there, I can spend it as of this for materials and supplies for the computer, so on and so forth on the signs. But uh, it's kind of a placeholder amount of money, really, uh, for other communities under the agreement to come in and use the sign machine. What other community make, uses it, am I may ask you? Um, I don't have the contract with me, but I, like Deerfield, it was Franklin County, um, Deerfield, Waitley, uh, any Franklin uh, County town could have opted in or can opt in. And I think Waitley was the last one to come in two years ago, and they, it was like $300 or something like that. They, they so, so. Hmm. okay. And the balance in it is, the balance is available for expenditure. The spending limit is 12000 What's the balance in that signage account, do we know? So right now, last year's, well, the appropriated amount was $12,000 total. There has been nothing added or subtracted from this account because we haven't had any communities come in. Okay. We, we, we pay for materials and supplies and all the aluminum, the blanks, everything in the DPW. We don't, um, out of my own budget, uh, my, my regular traffic budget is what I'm getting at. So we don't spend out of this account because you have to have revenues in it. Technically, it's weird. We'd have to, every time sign we make, we got to put revenue into this account and then we can spend out of the account. So it's kind of redundant uh, the way it works for us. Right. But, but the spending limit is 12000 Correct. But there, there, is there more than 12000 in it? Do you have the... Evidence? No, no. Uh, I have today's updated munis. I okay. It today. Right. Can I just see that sure. for a second? Thank you. Sure. 10000 and 2000 Okay. So nothing's gone in as a revenue and nothing's come out. It sits as it's, it sat last May. <laughs> okay. So, hmm. so this is budgeted in case the money is available and you're able to use it? If, um, if communities want to come in and make signs, we have to have this account. Okay. It's the only way they can pay for their signs and we can re replenish our materials. But we don't, but it just stays there. We don't have to, we, it's not reappropriated every year like- No, I think, I think- I'm, I'm, Okay, that's great, thanks. Just off the top numbers, I think 11,000 or whatever went back yes. in last year. I think we spent 500 or something like that because we had a community come in and use materials. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Central maintenance. Now we get into the. Yes. The budgets, as they say. <laughs> 107. 107. Yes, 107. So, um, Again, the mayor had mentioned we're uh, entering negotiations or in negotiations with central maintenance. Uh, I have three unions that work under me, SSEA, the DPW, and central maintenance has their own contract. So um, <clears throat> the first blocks, uh, central maintenance, the, uh, the, five, the, the um, 5110 through 5130 is, is all salaries. Um, 
in personnel. Uh, this I'll take it a block at a time because each block has a significant add or subtract to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the significant adds here is the very first one, uh, 67, 610 to 80,000. Um, so Mr. Vandalinder has made it quite public that he's leaving us at the end of June. Um, a quick update, we do have that, that ad um, out on the street. We do have multiple applicants and we'll be entering into um, um, interviews probably next week. Mm -hmm. So um, he's with us till the end of June, uh, but this is probably the going rate for, for um, the facilities manager position, the requirements and, and what's expected of them in today's day and age with all the different, you know, HVAC systems, uh, um, mechanical systems um, of, of every building, every, every significant system of a building. <clears throat> the position also uh, puts forth a uh, scope of work for bids for major projects or even minor projects and works with procurement on procuring those projects either through capital or through if it's built into the budget. Um, so we have 80,000 budgeted. We feel that we should be able to get our get ourselves a good qualified facilities manager replacement uh, for that kind of money. But I did some poking around and that's kind of what I came up with what we needed to budget mm -hmm. to, to have somebody aboard. Um, our intent is to hopefully have somebody aboard the beginning of June and be able to uh, work with George his last month or so, uh, because the transition is really key with all the uh, interfacing of, of the internet and the uh, softwares of these newfangled systems, especially in the new buildings. So, mm -hmm. um, and George's work order system, which is very good. Um, so that's the plan there. Um, so the other, the next three, three items are basically union uh, well, contractual obligations on the salary. Some of them went up a little bit, <clears throat> some a little more. Uh, HVAC tech is in, in added position. Um, and I'll get into that position a little bit here. So um, we have 12, 12 facilities. Um, actually 11 and one is kind of uh, in on mothball right now, and that's the Green River School. But um, I believe we have six city side facilities and five uh, fully active school buildings. So they all have HVAC systems, whether they're very old, like the boiler in the yard that we just replaced, uh, has no electronics, has no uh, sensors to keep an eye on it 24 seven all the way up to the newfangled system in the library, which is, is quite state of the art. Um, so HVAC tech, you'll see in all these line items, all the buildings have a contracted services, contracted services, and, and also the schools have a contracted services in their budget. I don't know where it reads, where it is, but uh, every time we contract an HVAC tech to come in, um, you're talking three to $500 just to answer the phone before they even come in and push a button. Um, and a lot of times these newfangled systems, it's like anything else, like the computer, it's, it's a little glitch and it's a matter of pushing a reset button and the thing's off and running and there's nothing wrong with it, but there's a pretty outstanding charge to bring a contract or a board uh, and, procure, and, ha and to procure a contractor and have them on call 24 seven is pretty difficult. Um, I think you take the old systems and the new buildings coming on, on board, um, the fire station, the new library, <clears throat> The John Zahn's fairly new, as we all know. That's got more or less state-of-the-art HVAC in it. Um, I think it's going to be a, a very good cost savings to bring our own HVAC tech on to go with our skilled electricians and our skilled plumber. Um, as it stands now, the electricians and plumbers, they, they, the plumber, they kind of work back and forth and help each other out on the larger projects with the labor and whatnot, which is very good. Or I will supply labor from the DPW side of, of uh, things to give them a hand. So um, HVAC tech, um, heating, uh, ventilation, and AC, that's what that stands for. So some of our buildings, the schools, I don't believe most of them have AC but they have HV, which is um, heating and, and uh, ventilation systems. So um, the plumber and an HVAC tech would work hand in hand pretty good too. And stuff's gotta be replumbed. If you gotta replace a boiler, you gotta replace parts. 
Usually you got to pull a plumbing permit, you got to get a plumber in, and then you have to have a certified HVAC tech to do their piece. So you got two people working on it, and that can get quite expensive um, as we've forged ahead with these newer buildings uh, coupled with our older buildings. Um, so that's my spiel on the community really needing an H or the city really needing an HVAC tech. I had a couple of follow up questions. Um, the first is I hear the argument about the cost savings. Um, and I also see it basically in the, I don't see where it's, where we're, we're receiving the money. Like I see the total amount that's going to central maintenance increasing uh, for more than equal because of other things amount. Um, and I'm wondering where is this, where is, if that $70,000 is saving money, where do we see the savings? So <clears throat> I know it's difficult to quantify, but all our city side buildings are listed here with contracted services. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, most of them are small monies. A lot of times they go over. I think a bunch of them are in the negative now where we have to call an HVAC uh, company in. Um, what I cannot speak to is the school side, but I, what I can say about the school side when it comes to HVAC, it seems like uh, there's a pretty constant, um, not constant, but uh, a much higher demand to hire an HVAC tech to do repairs in the schools than it is on the city side or has been the last few years. Um, their systems run really hard. You know, they got a lot more people in the building and they're, that they're being housed in or where they're housed uh, and they work out of. So um, I don't, like I said, I don't have that number, but I, I do know George is constantly working with the schools uh, other than pushing reset buttons. He's normally having to call an HVAC company in. So I can't quantify the school side. So should we be able to, if we look at the school side, should we be able to see a comparable amount? Yeah, they should be able to give you some sort of cost in their expenditures. So when it comes to most of the buildings in the school side buildings, we, we supply from the central maintenance standpoint, we supply, we supply the labor, labor and repairs and all that. Um, but the schools pay for parts, pieces, and whatever contractors have to come in. And the same goes for the city side buildings too. Uh, we do all the work with the electricians and the plumber, but uh, parts and pieces are, are back, back billed for a transfer of money from the departments, unless it's actually budgeted in something specific. So if we didn't allocate the funds for a new technician, would that be the new George having to come in? Um, like how would that be? Made? How would that difference? So what that would that equates to is we would have to make sure that the new facilities manager uh, is HVAC certified and licensed. Okay. And that's right through the state. Um, that's kind of like what we're bumping up against. Uh, the facilities manager position uh, has evolved uh, to a much tougher position when it comes to um, getting, you know, the way we all know how regulations and laws are changing constantly, but putting a project together of any any sort from a facility standpoint with building codes and everything else changing around, it's it's quite extensive putting a project together and that's part of the, the duties for that position. Um, and George over the years has run around and taken care of really minor things, um, but at the end of the day, uh, we should have a licensed HVAC tech um, performing this maintenance it's number one it's a liability yeah uh, we don't want to burn a building down we don't want to have an air quality problem with students as an example um, so and and i can't quantify what i can say is what i know just from experience is if we don't have the hvac tech and and i'm getting on the phone or the new facilities manager is getting on the phone every time a trip happens or a reset happens I do believe in one year we will far include in the schools what they have to pay will go far beyond what we're paying for an HVAC tech. I'm confident in saying that. Okay. And, and when you look around for salaries of central maintenance directors, the $80,000, does that include folks who are HVAC certified? Um, does, that, does that amount cover someone who's 
that has that certification. If they have the certification, great, but I don't believe it's part of the job description. Because it's technically an NR position. It's te technically a direct report to the mayor. Uh, it reports to me now. That it's, it's, see, that's the other thing to change. It's under DPW now, not a direct report to the mayor. Uh, now that central maintenance came under as my 10th division of the DPW. So now George and I, or the facilities manager and I work together on many things, but he has to oversee all the buildings, all the complaints, the work orders that come in. He has to put projects together. Um, he has to handle the administrative of, of the seven or eight employees, including the, the uh, custodians we have. So uh, it's a pretty hopping job. So, okay, so it's a pretty hopping job. And, and like you just said, it could be that new director could be HVAC certified. They could be. Um, I don't recall. I've reviewed a few applications, but I, have, I don't recall if any of them are certified. Um, but even if they were certified, I, I don't know how, <clears throat> I guess they said that wrong. But I'm not sure how you take a full-time administrator having to deal with the buildings and everything, and you have them doing replacement boiler sections and uh, troubleshooting uh, the, the ventilation system, the fans, the, the modules, the sensors, uh, you know, the actual nuts and bolts of doing the HVAC work. I, I just don't know how they'd have time. So we, we would still be contracting out, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Thank you for all those questions I asked. No, that's okay. That's <laughs> why I'm here. <laughs> what about, I hear the calls being made to uh, HVAC, I don't know if you call them consultant in this way, but someone outside. Does this need to be a full-time position? Like, I, I imagine $70,000 is full for a full-time position. Yes, it's, it's a full-time position. <clears throat> there is uh, no shortage of maintenance that needs to be done on our HVAC systems, too. Um, there's going to be quite the amount of work for an HVAC tech. And like I said, the plumber will probably jump in and they'll help each other out because some of the work overlaps a little bit under licensing. So um, I think it would be a very good compliment to the central maintenance department and in the city. Um, it would help the plumber out also. I think it's a good investment personally. Um, and I think what we end up seeing is like you said, we have all these other buildings that are coming in with contracted services. And even though if per se, we left those requests where they are for now, I think at the end of the year, you probably see those drop because some things would be covered by this. Um, I, I can only compare this in so much to, to my job right now, which is very similar to a, facilities administrator, it's essentially what I do. And we run into the same kind of thing as there was no systems in place for a lot of things, or, you know, our techs aren't trained as extent, they're not required to be trained as extensively as somebody working for the city would be. Um, so there was a lot of contracted services that were being done, whether it's even just preventive maintenance because people didn't know what to do or weren't licensed to do it. And having somebody in a position that has that extra ability. Um, I agree completely, like you said, if it's, if it's the administrator that has the licensing, that's great. They're not gonna be the ones who can go out and do the work. Mm -hmm. um, they might be able to assist, but how much time would they really have to be spending with somebody who is untrained to, to get the job done? And I don't, I don't think it would be a, even if say we, we added like, you know, an extra 10, 15 grand onto the proposed, um, management position to have that certification i don't think it would be worth the payoff we would get from just having somebody um in that full time because there's a whole lot of like when i said i agree completely there's a whole lot of field work that can be done by somebody like that mm -hmm. that probably doesn't get as much preventive maintenance done on it that we would hope yeah are the two new buildings um, the two new buildings that we're going to have open more complicated, more uh, computerized, et cetera. Uh, is that is part of the thinking. Yes, it's, it's definitely is that a big uh, part of the thinking for this HVAC tech. Yes, uh, okay. technically they're they're much more advanced. Um, That's what I wondered. Really. They're kind of like if you when I got my SCADA system on years back. I'm not sure if any of you were on the the council at the time, but the SCADA reports constantly uh, to a supervisor. 
uh, sensor says you got a problem with this with this pump in a pump station or something like that. Generally, you have to respond. But some of these softwares, and I'm not sure this is if we're going to land or not. I wanted to talk to George further on it, but it, literally, some of these systems you can reset something right on your cell phone or your computer, and then if it latches out again, then you know you have a problem. Then you respond. So. Um, there's definitely a big mix of old school, new school going on here. So, um, um, so also the facilities manager, a big part of their job is uh, we do get contracts, example, for the fire panels and stuff like that in all the buildings. Uh, we have to hire you know, somebody who is certified in fire panels and sign off elevators. Um, but it seems like the list goes on forever, but they have to manage those contractors and schedule them and get those those contracts in order to um, generally either once a year or sometimes they're three year agreements depending on mm -hmm. what it is. So, uh, and capital, they manage the capital projects that are approved by the city council too and the mayor. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna re reiterate what I think I hear you saying because I'm reading everything in here with a I to how to save money right now this year. So what I think I hear you saying is that us spending $70,000 for a full-time employee ends up saving more than that in the school budget in what I heard, I think I just heard you say, Mike, is in these lines, we can anticipate these lines potentially being lower. You can't promise that at all. Right. But that, it, the high contracting out ends up costing more than the seven. Yes, you know we all have to remember we pay prevailing wage on everything we do, so uh, that's kind of a big piece of it, especially under contracts. If we put an HVAC company under contract, I, I can assure you that we will go way over the seventy thousand every year. I wouldn't even begin to imagine what we'd be spending between the schools and the city side buildings. So. Um, and just because I'm saying this, we'll have like four emergencies all next year. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good thing. I can answer to that. So, um, but I mean, that's the reasoning. Um, HVAC tech has been sitting there for at least six or seven years <clears throat> in the in the waiting on, um, on on an org chart and my org chart too. Um, so now that to do that's the other piece. The two new buildings are coming online. They're more sophisticated. Um, I felt this year was the most important year out of any to, to try and get us an HVAC tech aboard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think we can, yeah, even if we didn't save necessarily 70 grand this year, like dollar for dollar, I think in the long term, we'd see that, you know, even if it's like 45 this year and 35 next year, just over time or whatever, I think it would, yeah. And like you said, it's kind of like, think about like a snow contractor, right? You, you want to have somebody on your line in case you get hit with snow because you can't clear it yourself. Mm -hmm. But then you could have a winter like last winter where we got like four storms mm -hmm. like, that were mm -hmm. of significance to people and just that happens. But if we had gotten bigger ones or you know, some some places, depending on where you are, even this year, like when Asheville got hit with three feet of snow, and you're like, well, I'll just yeah. I'll save some money and shovel it myself. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> you really yeah. kidding yourself. I don't know. I think it's a good. Yeah. Well, it's a good. It's a long time. It is a kind of a good analogy because um, you're asking an HVAC company who does uh, could be doing multi million dollar projects like BG Mechanical, say out of I think they're out of Springfield. You know, but you're holding their feet to the fire, and every little emergency they have to respond within a half an hour or something like that. Uh, and I'm not saying we wouldn't get a contractor, but I would I would think that the the parameters on the contract and how it was worded would be really tough to hold an HVAC company to feed to the fire for what ifs. Right. And we have these two large buildings that are coming on one, maybe late June of sometime in June and the other really won't be probably until after January. So it is, I was just thinking to myself, this um, always the possibility that that person could start, that could be half of your contract because we haven't got the buildings all up and going. I mean, it's, and knowing that the next year, mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just saying out loud, mm -hmm. one's ready to, you know, it's, it's not gonna, that's just a thought. That That is something that it looks like with these two enormous, uh, 
at complicated buildings with HVAC. Not that I know much about it, but um, you know they're not going yet. So this is, anyways. Yeah, but I, I yep. if I may, we also have some very old buildings that have constant right. problems that we're we'll be paying for. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I mean, they, we, we changed the boiler. Repeating. Right, we we changed the boiler at the yard with the mechanics a year okay. and a half ago when we lost that thirteen uh, section boiler, huge boiler. Mm -hmm. um, but that's an example of boiler or any system could be changed out by an HVAC HVAC tech and certified. With, with the plumber helping him or whatever, another set of hands from the DPW. So um, I think that was like a $42,000 estimate for the company to come in to provide it and install it. Uh, we did it for mm -hmm. close yeah. to half of that purchasing the boiler. So it's just a, a prior example. And I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, it just came to mind. There's another example. Okay. Well, <laughs> All right, we off to the next section. <laughs> um, so essentially, um, all the line items in the next block down to the very last one, with the exception of the last one, have basically remained the same. Uh, yeah, they're basically the same. Um, so the last one on this page is library contracted services. Um, so we have a new library coming on. Um, we have four full-time custodians uh, and a, a part-time custodian that maintains all the city buildings. Um, doesn't leave you a whole lot of wiggle room. Somebody's on vacation and another one goes out sick. So um, the new building, uh, two stories. Um, it's going to deserve um, to take care of it. Um, there's carpeting, there's uh, tile floor, <clears throat> very high ceilings and areas. Um, and the actual cleaning of the library, um, what is going to need, need to be done to maintain that new building uh, simply cannot be done during the day. Uh, very noisy. I'm sure we don't want uh, carpet cleaners going and uh, vacuums and industrial equipment and, and uh, floor scrubbers and buffers, um, so on and so forth um, during the day. Um, so this here will, will give us 15 to 20 hours a week from a contractor to come in at night and do that heavy lifting stuff that we can't get to during the day. Uh, one of our full-time custodians is still going to be assigned there during the day to finish off the cleaning and respond to <clears throat> any, any emergencies that come up. Uh, every day there's custodial emergencies uh, for different things. Um, so um, I decided the best way to go here would be um, a part-time cleaning company at night and then one of the custodians part-time during the day, but they will also cover other buildings for vacations. They all kind of rotate around um, to make sure we get good, good quality cleaning in all our city buildings. Um, this would also, you know, I've been asked, well, how come you didn't bring a full-time custodian um, for, for nights and do the whole building at night? Well, one turns into two under OSHA and today's liabilities. Uh, all it's gonna take is one slip on the floor um, by themselves and who knows. Um, and it can happen. So we decided, I decided to go um, with the contracted services to at least do the top portion of the building um, at night. And then the common areas or, or a combination of the common areas on the first floor too. So the quiet cleaning can be done during the day when the, the library is being occupied. Um, so that contracted services, they're gonna operate that Zamboni type thing that <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a Zamboni. Is there a hockey company. rink in that thing? I didn't know about that. No. <laughs> I was watching the meetings. This is going to be cleaning the carpets. They're yes. The Zamboni. For that person, yeah. there is a Zamboni thing. It yeah, and it's, it's a big carpet shampoo where they ride on, I know. Okay. So, so uh -huh. the, it is expected <laughs> that, the, that the contracted services is going to take care of that. There's also, is there a lift also that's in the library to clean the windows? I do not know the answer. I, thought, I heard there was some type of a lift that was for. So, will the this night person be using that to clean the windows? Because they're high. Uh, 
first of all, I didn't know about the lift, but I, I think I heard that. It, it, it depends on the contract, how it's written, what the contractor will handle. Okay. Does anybody know um, anything about the windows there? Um, again, they may have to because I'm not sure. I'm so sure you want a lift going up and down, up and down during study and read time. <laughs> I was thinking well, about this going at night because yeah. it's, you know, well, they say not to clean, not that I, I actually don't clean my windows very often to tell you the truth. It's just really true. I just don't. So, um, but they say not to like clean them on a really bright sunny day, but I wouldn't imagine that you clean them at night. And I was thinking about, I think I heard that there was, I, I, I think I was into some meeting because there's some different things with this building. Does anyone know anything about that? The window cleaning in this? No. You know, maybe something that was funded through the project. Uh, I'm aware of it. not not aware of that, but I know there's nothing in this budget to buy something like that. No, no, I don't think there is. But maybe no. we could, maybe, well, that would be something. We'll just ask for that. Um, if it would, maybe you could. Then they don't seem to be answering. So maybe <laughs> that would be a good thing if we could find out about how the, those windows would be cleaned. I was just thinking about that, whatever we're paying for, we should know. So with that, would you mind looking at, up that, Marlo? Thank you, please and thank you. No problem. Uh, so that's great. So either way, if we don't have this, this window cleaning um, tool, I guess, uh, or machinery, um, it'd be required on the contractor if that's what we require on the, the windows. Okay, yeah, I just, okay. All right. So I'm just want to make sure. So the old budget was in that three, three, almost four thousand dollars. So that's the number that used to take care of maintaining the, the old library. Is that correct? Oh, so the next page, the the current or no? Yeah, the same number. Just comparison. Because so yeah, because we have this one, and so it's thirty eight thousand more. Correct. So for the new library, is that correct? So correct. the old library was only just under $4,000 to clean. Correct, yes. So I, I think the difference is 37,907. So, so we actually just need 37,907. Yeah, is that right? thereabouts. Well, that's good because when we turn to the top of the next page, the little okay. savings right there then. Okay. Where? The Levitt Hubby Contracted Services, oh. which is a new request hmm. that um, for $4,060. Right. And this was, we put this in, um, uh, we actually asked for this line, num num line item to be put in by um, our account only because um, we wanted to, number one, separate from the new library and to what's going on with the old library. And as we know, it has that name. Um, so contracted services, um, if we semi or mothball that building there there are going to be situations where a contractor is going to have to come in we may have troubles with say the fire alarm system uh fire systems or or anything like that. so uh we actually i put this in here with george he feels that we'll be, that's what we need to move in there for anything that pops up if that building is is being um it's not utilized so to speak mm -hmm. Do we have any type of budget like that for any other unused buildings? Like the, uh, what's the school building? Green River? Green River, I don't know what they would have. We don't, but the school side would. I don't know if they have anything budgeted or not. So this line is for the old library. Mm -hmm. And the, you just said the number 37,000 something. Or yeah, total of 41,844. There's a small amount of money in there for other contracted services that may come up. We have to have a little something there. My guess is that the first year, some of these or most of these systems in this new library should be under some sort of warranty anyways. But if there's something that's not covered, we should have a little bit of money there just in case. Okay. I think most everything stayed the same. And you'll notice, you know, materials and supplies didn't change a whole lot because like I said, the materials and supplies are generally back billed and it's a transfer from, from the departments in which they were purchased or used. So. Um, I always just look down this, these set of 
items to the materials and I decide which that some some buildings are really shining themselves up. That's what I would say. Uh, I'm just tongue in cheek. Uh, City Hall like looks like it does a good job. Twenty two hundred. Police Department, 2,800, and the Jay-Z Centers, huh. they need 800 cleaning supplies. Um, and the new library cleaning supplies, well, they just need 500, but the Levitt, we, we're going to keep something in the Levitt Hubby cleaning supplies for $800? Yes. Okay. So the library cleaning supplies is kind of a low number because it kind of is going to be offset by whatever we contract. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And what CM stands for central maintenance? Yes. And why the increase there? Oh, for the tools and equipment? Under $12,000. Yeah. There's some tools that we've really been needing that have been put off for quite a few years and I'm just grabbing my, my initial budget here so I can remember everything that's in that line. So the plumber has been asking for two or three years for a plumber snake and camera system. Uh, we're going underneath floors and throughout the piping through the ceilings and everything else. Um, so you can not only, you not only can you snake and in free clogs on the inside of the building, inside walls and everything, mm -hmm. um, but you can run the camera through and see what's causing the, the uh, problem. So that's a $7,800 item. Um, rather than just tear walls apart and uh, mm -hmm. pipes with flashlights and so on and so forth. Um, portable pipe threader, we do an awful lot of pipe threading between the electricians and the plumber. Um, we generally have to rent. Um, so, and we, we have one in the mechanic shop and, and we share, but there's, there's certain size dies and whatever that we don't cover for sizes of pipe. It's too small. For, for the vehicle maintenance shop, we deal with the pretty big piping. Uh, so that's a two thousand dollar item uh, circuit tracer this is for the electricians they've been wanting one for quite some time now um and a special punch set uh for 1845. Um, the five thousand for miscellaneous tools and equipment i think has always been there or six thousand so um, that's the tally on that it's shocking sometimes to hear the things that I don't know. I would have assumed that we had <laughs> in the city already. And well, central maintenance is really lacking on some of the tools they really need. Uh, we, you know, we do rent when we or borrow. Uh, the electricians are pretty frugal to borrow from electrician friends or whatever. But I really think we should have our own stuff mm -hmm. um, on board. We had some frozen pipes this winter, and we had to go out and we had to rent a, a, hmm. a, a machine to you know defile the pipes mm -hmm. for the weekend. So. Um, that'll be later down the road, so we can be. I'd like to see us 100% fit to take care of anything that that comes along. Okay. And I had asked you on the vehicle lease at the end. You're leasing the vehicle. Um, this was, uh, I think you said George had a very old something that was totally falling apart and this would be a what, what would it be that you have? So George's vehicle will probably replace next year. Um, this would be a vehicle. Um, you have you seen our small central maintenance vans running around the white or the white one, the white one we have the plumber uses. It's another one of those to equip the HVAC person because there's a lot of equipment that comes along with their job. Mm -hmm. uh, so this vehicle lease is a three year lease for their uh, Como Petty van. That's what we used to call them. But, uh, <laughs> They're, they're back in uh, popularity. <laughs> so I remember when I was a kid, you know, a little kid. So, uh, but that's what that vehicle is for. And I believe I have George's in, or George's, the, the facilities manager replacement. Mm -hmm. um, or if we have a suitable hand me down okay. uh, from another department that's cleared by Carol, obviously. <laughs> that's what we'll do. I just want to note that I, I'm going to do this homework. I just, 
I wrote myself a note that when I look at the numbers, it doesn't look like a that big of a jump between last year and this year. I imagine when I would add, I, I imagine that the numbers are right and and I'll add them up. I was just reached out my calculator, but I'm too distracted if I look at that, but I'm just, it looks like a big difference. Um, but I'm not, I'm just noting that that's something that I'm going to do. To, overall budget? Yeah, the overall expense line seems to have jumped more than where I'm seeing that jump, but that's probably just me not seeing it. That's actually a kind of a good point because I see forty-one thousand. Yeah, it's like forty-one plus four. The, the, the wages jump. No, no, but I'm the, 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 the expense line. Eighty-six thousand. Right. Eighty seventy-six thousand. Oh, um, and then the twelve thousand. The twelve thousand in the tools, right? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. There's also, there's 37 just in the library. Yeah. Yeah. So one well, that's what that's in there. And two in the... I didn't, uh, I finally add them. I didn't do that one. That's a very good, a good... Yeah. yeah I, think, I think the vehicle lease and the, the materials tool and equipment right. and, the, and, the yeah. and and the uh contracted services you'll hit that number. I think about that one see the credit card why did I buy that? You said. I say that on all my budgets every two weeks. How do we spend the money? I look at Eunice. I know it's high. okay. Do we have anything else on central maintenance? No, I think it, that was, I think I knew we were going to have a lot of questions on central maintenance. And that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought, I anticipated that there would be a lot of that because there were some new things in there, Marlo. So thank you for yeah. going over that. Well, when you go With from, a fine tooth comb, you I might add. 560, okay. 56 to 720, right. 6, 3, 7, yeah, I was expecting. <laughs> yes, well. Um, it's one of the smallest budgets, and I think it's one of the most frugal budgets we have. I think right. we have a lot for our money. Right. And, and I thought because there were new things, I thought there would be a lot of questions. So thank you. So, um, so then I think if I'm correct, do we go to page 150 or uh, one, uh, 149. 150? And I just want to point out just, just, just so everybody can see on this one, he gave this out to us the last year mm -hmm. so that everybody knows yeah, who's yeah. working where. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, under what budget? So fire away. I, I shouldn't say that. I'm not going to say that. No. Please go forward. Well, it is the big budget out all of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a lot happening here. Um, so I'll just start with uh, <clears throat> the DPW. The DPW and engineering is together, um, obviously, uh, in admin. This covers all our divisions except for anything water and sewer of the DPW. Um, and that word chart is very helpful. Um, so um, you'll see a lot of the permanent, a lot of the wages, the longevity pay, um, stuff like that did have an increase to meet contractual obligations. Um, again, you'll hear my, myself repeat myself, but I just am in that mode. Um, so longevity pays go up each year, whoever is beyond 10 years. <clears throat> the uh, office contracted services, we uh, that's basically handled through central services now. It keeps showing up in the budget, but that's handled by Fernando uh, for the most part. Uh, so engineering contracted services, this fluctuates every year. It all depends what we foresee for um, capital projects in anticipation that they um, they pass city council, obviously, uh, or other things we see up and coming, like we're gonna have to have a third party set of stamp plans to have an interconnect with Montague at the General Pierce Bridge. We can't do it in house, they won't let us. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a jump in here, that's gonna be seven or $8,000, so I added to the last year 13. We have other things come up during the year where you know, DEP, EPA is requiring a lot of third party uh, engineering plans now. We do a lot of engineering design in house. We send them out to be stamped or reviewed, but um, we do all our own sidewalk engineering, so on and so forth, and design. So you'll see the water and sewer kind of, in general, kind of bounce all around on this number every year. It's, it's what we anticipate. Um, 
could happen. Um, there's certainly no fat built in. I think I spent all my engineering lines every year pretty close to it. So, um, so that was a pretty good increase there, um, seven grand. Most everything else under the advertising, I'm holding it. I looked at the history, um, we've been in pretty good shape. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so an assistant engineer, is, there's an assistant engineer in, on the top of the, uh, I'm on 151, am I right there? Yes. Okay. Um, did, did we have three people last year or four under under this, under administration? So we had three to start the year. I had asked for the assistant engineer position to be filled. It was was not filled in the last year and a half of Mayor Martin's administration once Alan Torag was uh, promoted to the engineer. So we've been running with three and two of those are inspectors overseeing all these great big projects we have out there. So they're on the road all the time. Uh, the, the current engineer, um, Alan Tora, he handles all the Chapter 90 paperwork and everything everything through MassDOT, the paving program, uh, so on and so forth. He, he works with the planning department with the different you know, sets of plans that comes from planning. Him and I review those, Alan and I. So we were really hurting for this assistant engineer because the assistant engineer is supposed to be putting the paving program together, working with me, um, so on and so forth. So. It's been a big relief to the department. We've been able to go and check in on contractors and do inspections before they, you know, if they connect to our sewer or water and make sure it's done right before they backfill. A lot of that stuff was, was falling between the cracks before. Uh, and guess who, a year later when that water bubbles out of the road has to go fix it if mm -hmm. it's done right. And, and that's not a knock on contractors, things happen. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so I, I had, it was, it was budgeted for half a year. I was able to hire um, in January, right, this past January. But I had so many openings um, throughout from July through September. I had the half a year covered, or I had the rest of the year covered before January 1st. So I transfers from other salary lines into um, these other lines so that I was able to hire the assistant engineer in like September, October. I don't have the date on me, but it was before January. Okay. It was three months before. So that, that's the, the scenario behind that. I wanted originally July 1, but it ended up being in September, maybe October. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so the, just a quick breakdown, I think. Um, so under under this this line item, um, you have my salary. Uh, the deputy director is split three ways. So one third of his salary is under this line. So when I say they're split three ways, a third he's paid out of water, a third he's paid out of sewer, and a third he's paid out of the general DPW budget. Um, and my two techs are the same way because they work water, sewer, and general side projects every day. Mm -hmm. um, and it's split up throughout the year. It's not perfect. I mean, I haven't added up the hours, but uh, I bet, it, bet it's pretty darn close. Um, and the assistant engineer, he's uh, currently coming out of all general. Um, every year, my, my budget fluctuates. If we say a supervisor leaves or retires and have to bring a new one in, I, or sometimes I move divisions around for more experience from supervisors. Mm -hmm. So they're not just doing solid waste and sewer for 15 years. They mm -hmm. all cover for each other. So there are some, some line items that got moved around half in the sewer, some were half out of water back in the general. And, and, and I really don't want to confuse everybody unless for specific questions, but you'll see where there's some increases and that's probably where the good questions will come in that I can explain why, or if there was a major decrease when we get the sewer and water too. Um, there was, there's been a lot of moving parts this past year, um, to say the least. Um, but for pretty much the first page, um, there's really not much of a change, um, except for the, the, the salary line a little bit, um, about $40,000 increase overall for salaries in the admin and engineering. Um, and that includes the, um, also includes um, uh, the office manager. Everyone knows is Janine. <laughs> so, I mean, so I, yeah. um, so I don't know. Last time, Jenny, you were asking all the everyone 
how much they were making. Right, I was looking for, to, to, yes, go ahead. Um, so this line of the permanent salaries, I, I heard there's parts of this are going to you, the deputy director, the perhaps the assistant general engineer and the techs. I'm curious what amount, what, what the pay is for each of those positions and how this number breaks down and, and yes, the 41-ish thousand increase there, what that is going to um, Let's see. Uh, my position's budgeted from 111,400. The deputy director is 29.3, but that's one third of his pay. So it'd be 29.3 times three, but uh -huh. third water, third store. Uh, <clears throat> Alan Tora, uh, the engineering superintendent, 87,800. Uh, office manager, 59,150. Assistant engineer, 62,110. Engineering tech, 20,880. That's split three ways. Engineering tech, second engineering tech, uh, 17,570, and that's three ways. And there's also a $2,000 um, recycling coordinator stipend for the office manager in there. And and that forty one thousand more. How? I think I heard you say admin and engineering. I was trying to follow. Well, I think the increase is mostly on the assistant engineer. That was not a position last year, and the current budget only budgeted a half a year. So I think you would find that's probably just about the full increase. Uh, okay. Or a good portion of it. Okay, so this amount doesn't include hiring somebody who's not yet been hired. Correct. This is all, this is my existing staff that I printed out when I formed the budget and knew this. Yeah, there are no extra positions in, in my other budgets. New positions, per se. So I just found this on what we just got the other day, which that would be great. If, if this, if what we had the other day was printed, you know, remember what you asked for and we got this 92 page thing? Yeah. Um, that's why I wasn't asking because I thought it was in here. But the, it says assistant engineer uh, contractual. That's a sixty-two thousand dollar sixty-two one zero. Does does that go between? Is he all in that budget? He's all general. That's his complete salary. Yeah. Okay. This would be so good to have this in here. Next time we get this, we get this after our last meeting, Madeline. So, thank you. All right, more questions on this. It took me five months to build this thing. I'll stay all night. Okay. <laughs> all right. This is when people think I'm crazy, but this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay. Me. <laughs> so, so, I was looking for that. Did we talk about while I was looking for this? Did we talk about the contracted services? On the, under this, did I uh, that was up a little bit. Engineering one, yeah. We did, I missed that. He was talking about the the steps, approvals. Okay. Yeah, so, but I I mean this this report Sorry. that I that I generate when I when I actually build the budget uh, has a breakdown. Uh, Fifty three oh three, right? Yes, yeah. and I I actually was looking at this. I couldn't do two things at so. Mm -hmm. EAP updates happen every year. Emergency action plans. Okay. Third third party um, stamp plans that make may arise. Uh, anything like a register of deeds that pops up that we have to deal with from the okay. DPW side. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then and then there's not this year, but next year there's going to be additional money put in because we're going to have. Um, inspections on a few of our dams from the Office of Dam Safety. Um, and we have to actually do inspections that we have to pay for from the Okay. Room. So um, just to, not to get into FY25 already, but <laughs> <laughs> it's always a moving target for me. <laughs> I'm already making notes. <laughs> no, but, there, but it also sounds yeah. like there's a lot of money 
that there's a lot of grant money that's available for the fixing of those too, doesn't it? Yeah. Am I off the The key to any grant is you should have shovel-ready plans. You get the most points, the most opportunity to be awarded a grant. Shuffle, shuffle ready. Meaning the engineering and design is all done. The yeah. project is, this is the project. This is what we need. We know what we're talking uh, about. Right. Yeah. Which, if I remember right, because we talked about this several years, the importance of having that assistant engineer when you were down it was, it was really, it's really key to getting these grants to make sure we have mm -hmm. uh, fully staff. Yeah. And then, and then working with our grants writer, <laughs> Alan Torog, myself, the deputy. We're all involved in the grants at one capacity or another. Um, we're kind of flinging them around to each other, whoever is best at the skill set at the time to work with um, the grants writer, too. Okay. Um, You're doing great. Okay. I just want you to know that. Yeah, it's, it's, not not personal. Personal. <laughs> what? it's not personal. I mean, you probably do this every year, and it's my first time, but it's dirty. No. <laughs> no. The rest of you know, but Alice and I'll talk a little deeper. Uh, so the city yard that that really um, I bumped the yard materials just a little bit only because of the yard materials line item we all, we all, 52 mm -hmm. at the top that's increased a couple of thousand dollars and that's just simply simple increase in the safety gear that we supply day to day uh, the rain gear the safety glasses the ear protection uh, special safety gear for the mechanics when they're painting special masks all that has increased a little bit. Uh, so. so how many? So let's go because this is how many FTEs. I know I can go back to the how many full time employees is this? How many did it? Should be 60, 65 and two F um, PTEs, two part time. One. How many? Sixty seven total. But no, no, under um, just under the highway, under highway division. Four on the highway. One, two, three, four, five. We're at the city yard. Yeah. You're ahead of us, Jim. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, we're not. Oh, all it's got you with that. Safety blast. That'd be nice. Five hundred. I guess there's no questions on safety here. Um, I'm glad it's there. <laughs> yeah. um, Mm -hmm. Well, now that we're on the OSHA standard, it's all the more important. It's, uh, it's not just Department of Public Safety. Uh, all right, where, where are you at, Jimmy? Okay. No, no. <laughs> just I definitely was on the, well, I, I got off, yeah, so I need to look at this. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this, this, one, this one went down. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had a, a large turnover, um, you know, part of the folks moving on or retiring or actually bidding to another division. So that's another thing that moves the salaries up and down. Um, so this has gone down because we have, I think we have two or three new employees in the division that obviously are lower on the pay scale. Um, you figure their step half a year and you figure their, their salary for the full year and then that step for a half a year. Uh, it's gone down because we've had a lot of movement here. Um, a lot of the employees in previous years were at the top of the scale. Yeah. Um, we had uh, a, a, a highly paid person in this division actually bid over the parks department. So you'll see these numbers go down and you'll see like parks will probably be up. Mm -hmm. Because we, I still have to carry his pay from when he bids to when a person, let's say he, but a person bids to another division within the DPW through the union contract, which is an opening. Um, I did my best to hide, you know, hold the lines like on highway materials. I, I held, I, I went up five thousand. Uh, Blacktop's gone up and gone up forty percent in two years, and I don't know what we can expect this year. Um, I'm hoping it it holds. Um, so we're paying around 115 a ton when it was like 76 two years ago or a year and a half ago. Lumber, lumber's chopped, so maybe it'll. Um, yeah, it seems like anything <laughs> made with oil doesn't draw. Uh, it'll stay the same. Um, I meant nothing by that, but I know black box has never gone down. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so 45 grand, it, it goes quite a ways patching potholes, um, doing road patches. Uh, the large excavation patches that are made by the water and sewer come out of the water and sewer budget, but the highway 
uh, personnel patch the large trenches and ditches. So uh, I don't think there's a lot changed here, clothing allowance, um, so on and so forth. Going to page 153, uh, <clears throat> the traffic division, that's one person's wage there at the, the very first line. Obviously, that's just con contractual obligations with stuff. Um, so, uh, like I said, it stopped me at any point, but a lot of the stuff remains the same. Um, uh, traffic marking con contracted services ends in 524A, just below the blue line. Can you hold on one sec? Yeah. So, we, and the information we got last time, I've been on break since the last meeting, but did we get the information on, or if anyone else had the chance to look at that? Does that include, I mean, I have it right here. Does, have an, um, does it include the pay of each person so we don't have to like right. ask 511? It, one, one? Okay. it does. It is not, it's like I said, it's hard to match that up, but it does. It has highway crew, it has highway crew chief, highway operator. Okay. Um, highway labor, which is open, and then there's two other highway laborers, and it has their you know, salaries. Then yeah. I won't ask when I don't see a significant increase. Then so okay. Yeah. And when I hear highway division, I think I think a high. I think ninety one, but that is not the right thing to be thinking. This is our words. Uh, basically, our our highway and traffic division is combined. There's two kind of two separate budgets here, uh -huh. but they're the same staff work together. Um, road names. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Our road crew. <laughs> okay. Uh, so like I said, the contract uh, traffic marking contracted services, um, you can see it's gone from 27,000 and FY22 actual to 45,000. This is all strictly increased. This is contracted. They paint our millions of linear feet of yellow lines. You see in the middle of the road, the edge white lines. Um, and there's also coverage in here for, <clears throat> excuse me, the last two or three, four years, the added bike lanes that we have. We have now that we have, we have to maintain them. So I think it was like 0 0.0035 per linear foot. It's like 0 0.0065 now per linear mm -hmm. foot for double yellow. So if you have 2 million of yellow, you're gonna take that and say 4 million on a double yellow. So that's how that's all calculated. So you can see it's, it's kind of, quite extensively uh, in two years. And, we, and the, this is safety. We have to have this. We have to have the markings. Um, other than that, I think everything else kind of stays the same. Um, you get to the service division. Um, this has actually gone down. So, so in service, I'm moving along to this. In service, how, there's how many? In service, I'm just trying to find this here. Um, service, there are. Oh, and I got one open. Okay. And can you just 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 go over what what it's be, be, the types of service? It's a lot of vehicle service, right? Would you say it was all involved with vehicles, Marlo? The 4290, right? Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Yes, this is all vehicle maintenance. And every vehicle in the city, does every vehicle in the city come to you or just? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can see the, the salaries went down a little bit on this. And this is because one of the supervisor um, who was paid out of the service division is now split half between the service division and the water distribution because he's now supervising water. Mm -hmm. So you see how things are moving around. At the end of the day, if you put my three budgets together, it'd be yeah. the same numbers, but just increases for who can get steps and all that, who's not stepped out. So uh, that's why that shows such a, a significant decrease. Um, so, the so like you do all the oil lube and filters for all the, every car that we have? Is that like, is yes. that right? Okay. Yes. We handle, we handle the whole fleet, including the school fleet, fire police, uh, GSET. Um, <clears throat> GSET's class two? Yes, but I'll, I'll explain. 
Okay. So the small, I have a DPW budget for uh, parts and supplies. Um, yeah. My budget covers all of the DPW, approximately 64 vehicles, not including all the little equipment we got running oh. around. Um, but it also covers the small departments. We, we cover their fuel yeah. and we also cover their repairs and maintenance yeah. on their vehicles. It makes no sense for uh, Christy, the rec director, to have a small fuel line item and, and a part, what does she do for parts and supplies? So it, it's, it's a piece of knowledge that a lot of folks don't, don't know that all the small right. departments, I carry them in my budget for their awesome. repairs and fuel. Um, GSAT is, is, is back build their parts and supplies. Um, sure. And so is it the fire department and police department and school department. So we provide all the labor for a much cheaper cost than to send everything out. Yes, I imagine. Uh, so you do the gas for, tell me the departments that you do the gas for in this. Uh, the, the, uh, the city hall car, the assessor's car, the assessor's vehicle. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Board of Health, or I should say Health Department. Yeah, that's okay. Um, inspections Department. Hmm. Uh, rec Department. Yeah. I think that's it. And G sets, you do their gas? Uh, no, okay. no. Right, we, we go through the system at the end of the month and everyone has sent the transfer. I sign them and then okay. the department has right. signed it, have it transferred back into one, my 4290 mm -hmm. budgets. Hmm. Okay. Now, there, there's certain repairs that come up or if we're really behind. <clears throat> we'll ask the department head to send it out um, if we're way behind. I can't remember the last time that happened, but... Some of these newer hybrid, they're, they're really difficult to troubleshoot. Uh, we've been short of a mechanic now for, well, going on a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of that stuff, I know the, the, the chief has had, chief of police has had, or, or uh, Robbie's had to send some things out only because we don't have the ability to repair it yet. So, um, mm -hmm. but other than that, we, we take care of everything in house. Okay. Thank you for doing it's attempt that. to. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, vehicle parts, you'll see that that, that was a, a jump there. Um, so it's from 80 to, to 100. Um, an example is a light switch in one of our, our dump trucks it used to be $15 and some change. It's now 29 for the identical same switch. Just a small example of materials and supplies, how they've gone up. Fuel, fuel filters and oil filters have increased 25, 30% per filter. Mm -hmm. So we go through what, probably a thousand of them a year <laughs> for the different vehicles. So, um, so that's, that's pretty straightforward. Um, so at the top of the next page, the landfill contracted services, we've been at 25,000 for what seemed forever. Um, and I was notified uh, talking with Ty and Bond that they were gonna increase a little this year. So we've been stuck at that rate for 10 years, I think, 12 years. Mm -hmm. I would have preferred being stuck further, but, uh, but that uh, was a small increase. Um, and they take care of the annual reports, quarterly reports. They do all the monitoring up there in the well system, so on and so forth with DEP. Um, <clears throat> So the next one would be uh, solid waste. So right out of the gate, um, the permanent wages and, and salary full-time, you'll see there was a pretty significant jump there. There were only six employees up there. But <clears throat> this is where I brought a supervisor aboard uh, late, mid to late summer. Um, and the supervisor oversees the solid waste department and oversees the sewer department. So <clears throat> half of, the, I don't, I'm not going to say that. So in other words, half his salary had to be put into waste collection when it used to come out of water and sewer. Okay. So like I said, some of these line items look like a major increase, but there's decreases in other, and you're going to find that the only thing is there is additional steps that folks were allowed in, um, whatever contractual obligations we have. Mm -hmm. so, um, and if I, if I can try and explain another way, let me know if I'm being, con, uh, being confusing. Um, so everything else kind of stayed the same there, uh, except for 
Um, <clears throat> diesel fuel and, and gas, you know, I kind of had to take a look at we were, where we were at when the council gave us additional money because it was going up and up and up and up. And then it went back down mm -hmm. and it came back up a little bit and it stabilized. So I kind of took my best stab at where I think we're going to be. Uh, so I had to increase the diesel fuel. Um, uh, 70, 14 grand, I increased the diesel for the trash trucks up there and the hauling, hauling trucks to Springfield. Yeah, but if you don't use at the end of fiscal year 23, that closes to, to, yes. to yes. end up being free. Every, everything in the central maintenance budget and everything in this budget closes back. Okay. You, you said to free cash, do you so they, close to the free cash or to the general fund? Well, it closes, it, it will close, I don't know how, they explain, but it closes, and then that's what makes up our free cash. I think they end up. Oh. Um, the financial director, she gets everything done by like the end of August, but the fiscal year ends okay. July, you know, ends June thirtieth, and then they look at whatever is left over, and then it has to go to. Is, am I right? Then it goes to the state, and it's usually certified maybe in the fall into free cash yeah. for the next year, but it doesn't. Okay. So because we we gave extra to to three different departments for gas, and I don't think as it went down. It, you know, it, it's good that everybody had that, but it doesn't look like on I mean, like everybody's used. To. And like right now, we're our fuel use is way up because we hit spring, and now we're back in the field with, uh -huh. with eight crews excavating and, and moving every day. So okay. uh, it's always hard to answer in the middle of the winter. Well, how are we doing on right. the fuel? Because it's you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it is. It's, it's hard. Right. Okay. I'll do a look back to all the other years. Mm -hmm. um, so this is pretty much all the same. Um, right through the next page is all the same. And if you want, rather than just flip pages, if you want to take a quick peek, you have any questions, just let me know for me. I don't know what to say. I'm just saying I don't have any questions on page 156, okay. just 157. Um, so 157. Um, let's see. There's no major increases uh, except for salary. Yes, for the parks division. Actually, one of the people got. When the folks got redistributed over to that department. Yeah, I just want to make sure I give you the right information. I have it right here. Uh, that's actually less than last year. The Parks Division is actually, it was adopted with 468, 9, and you yeah, got the 462. True. Yeah, not much has changed there. Um, okay, got it. I think some longevity was added. Um, okay. And then the from nine thousand to nineteen thousand. That is, uh, you know, we made we made some cuts or, or some reductions. Um, this this reduction here, uh, I requested twenty seven thousand with, and this is for our summer help program. Uh, so I figured nine thousand per per summer help from mid May to late August, and then coming back mid May to the end of the budget cycle. Um, minimum wages we know is at 15 now and any returning summer help gets a quarter raise per year. So if they're back for their third year, they get 1575. Um, so we did reduce this one position, uh, trying to find some places to reduce the budget. So with 19,000, it actually leaves me two and a part. Um, so I'll have two summer help in the parks division going forward, summer help. Um, there's no other major increases. The trees, do you, can you get most of the trees from the, um, the tree committee? Yes, we're on a, uh, we've worked with the tree committee through this five-year grant. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I believe, the last year of the grant. So, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> after this year, what are we going to do with trees? You know, we still have donations and whatnot. Um, I think the tree committee receives donation. Uh, they have the nursery going on. 
Um, but as far as um, the amount of trees, we'll have to take a look at budgets next year and how we accomplish more trees. But for this year, we're pretty safe. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that? More questions? Okay. Um, the parks area, I know we had talked remembering back from a few years ago when it was hard to find part time. Are you able to find those? And do you have like an I ideal number that you would want for like summer help? So last year was interesting. We had a, a free grant opportunity through Mass Hire in the unemployment office or the unemployment section. So we brought four or five of them along. They paid for everything. The, the DPW didn't have to pay. And then we had a staff of four. So we had quite a few summer help last year. Um, only three, three or four of them showed up on my payroll between water, sewer, and general side. But we had, I think, eight or nine total. Um, the, the summer help program is, is really kind of personal with me. It's kind of a mentoring thing. Um, the, the policy and the, the program that uh, I rewrote when I came back, you know, it goes to GHS students first, GH um, or Greenfield students in college. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to get into some of the feel good stories, but there's a, there's a few of them that, it, that have been really kind of cool. Over ah, the years. Nice. So we, we don't look at it as just extra help, go mow the grass. We, you know, um, don't you want to stay in the college now or something like that? You know, um, um, we have fun with it too. So, um, they are, you know, they learn, they got to be at the clock for seven and, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, it's been an ongoing program since I worked here and I hope it continues. So uh, that's but, great. Wow. Uh, much of what Christy does at a larger uh, yes. level, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's about it on that. Okay. Uh, snow and ice removal. Um, I had increased that budget a little bit. We got really thin. I didn't check the numbers today, but I think we're down to like 12 or 13 grand out of the 217, 800 from this year. Mm -hmm. Just when we thought we were, I came to the council and said, I think we're in trouble. I don't know, I made it stop snowing or something. <laughs> I gotta remember how that happens. So, um, or, and no more ice. I think we got one small storm after that. But, um, but finally all the bills are in parts and pieces. Um, the, the big expense in the overage this year was the vehicle maintenance parts and snow and ice plow parts, sander parts. Uh, it's all getting kind of old. Um, things happen, uh, things break. Um, so this budget ended up being level funded as uh, presented to the council. I did increase, <coughs> excuse me, the, the diesel a little bit, and I also increased the, the parts uh, by 10 grand, but looking for places to, to trim the budget down to, to um, uh, the best we can at doing that was, it's the one budget we know we can we can deficit spend. Deficit That's what spend. I was trying to remember. I knew this was yes. one budget that was different than all the others. And right. So the re only reason I increased it is I I want to try and not be in a position to where we're looking for a hundred thousand dollars at the end of the year next year. Say I'm fully staffed and where we're going to find the money, um, but it is. Following the trends, I mean, I've been able to keep us in budget, or not me, Mother Nature has been able to keep us in budget for the last four years that I've been back. So uh, it's been close. Um, mm -hmm. So we level funded it back to where I was last year. Okay. Uh, street cleaning, uh, this this was uh, the next page 159. Mm -hmm. This is an increase for the business district and the parking lots because only because of costs of fuel and whatnot going. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been at pretty much uh, 37 for, for quite a while. We had to bump it a little bit. Uh, trash disposal, um, $25,000 increase, that's per our contract. We're going into our fourth year, I believe already, or third year of that contract. Uh, that's contractual. Um, recycling fee, uh, have 70,000 in there. If you recall, that started out at 136, two years ago, when the, the big thing was going on where um, yeah. the, the market fell apart and it was gonna cost us 136,000. Yeah. scared. Uh, so anyways, I bumped it back last year because um, we didn't, we were actually receiving money. Um, the first 
four months this year, we were receiving money. And uh, since then, we've been paying in. Last month, I had to pay in $7,183 for recycling. So I'm hoping my 60,000 gets us to, to June 30th. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping the market turns around and you all see the 70 grand sitting there next, next year to have to take back to free cash or back to general. Okay. Um, so small increase in the trash disposal supplies. That's the supplies where is needed up the station, uh, plastic wrap, the whole nine yards to, to palletize items and whatnot. All, all look like large increases, but overall small increases in, in this budget. Um, um, I did not put any temp, uh, summer help wages into my temp sal salary wages into the uh, cemetery line. Uh, I held the, the cemetery uh, materials and supply um, lines. And I think that does it. Okay. All right. I just, I want to say thank you specifically. I, first of all, all the work that you put into this. And second of all, I feel like I'm learning two completely different languages. I've never, I don't do any of this type of work. So the language around just the work that you actually do, and then the other language around finances and the pace that you presented that at was very respectful of someone who's working hard to wrap it, me, who's working hard to wrap my mind around it. So really, thank you. No, you're welcome. Appreciate that. It's also me trying to think about what I was thinking about back in October when I was- Oh, great. <laughs> work <laughs> <clears throat> Sewer Enterprise. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so everyone gets their water and sewer bills, and out of this, we're paying for these two these two funds, correct? Yes. Okay. So none of this money comes out of the general fund. Right? Uh, no. Because it's all over your fault. No. Enterprise fund. Yeah. This, this is all comes from the rate payers, as we say. Okay. Rate payers of water and sewer. Sorry, I only have. Well, I'm on septic too. So. <laughs> I want to warn you, it's becoming a thing in the past. They're pushing communities to extend all their sewer lines to reach out to where septics are. Oh. I want to see more septic systems in the ground. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Like even to the forefront? Yeah, I mean they're they're they suggesting it, but okay. Got it. thirty million dollars later, you could have sewer out of your yeah. house. <laughs> Some <laughs> stations, <laughs> there, you know, yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's just say they want to see more. Got it. Absolutely. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So what are the rates right now? Oh, uh, one thing I didn't write down. That's okay. Three, so sewers at 610, and I believe water is at 352. I should know this like that. Okay, it's all right. Per 100 cubic feet. Okay. Yep. Very good. Uh, the first page here at 190 is a quick look at the, the rates and then the, the, the total revenue. I guess what I pick up is, unless there's any questions on that, I pick up a DPW admin and engineering. Uh, you'll see uh, there's an increase here, and that's where that supervisor that's doing solid waste, and he's the sewer collection supervisor, you'll find that's why there's an increase here from the 198 to the 237. Um, So again, that's already an existing person. And I'm not seeing Sorry. this. I'm not seeing this on this report. Somebody's got the harmonica going. Yeah. Um. Oh, <laughs> Somebody's got the on. Very nice. It's a nice backdrop. <laughs> I would tend to say that. I'm enjoying it. So it looks like this. Um. So the, the addition is the assistant field superintendent for $33,425 under this line. And that person is, was recently hired. Right? Uh, well, 
Yes, he's new. He's new to the SSE at Union, and he's overseeing uh, sewer collections in the yard, not the wastewater treatment plant, the, the actual construction crew and solid waste department. So that's why you see these kind of flipped up. That's why solid waste went up, um, sewer went up here, but water in general went down. I think we haven't gotten the water, but you'll see in a few of the lines general went down because of the way I assign the supervisors to what divisions they'll work on. I'm just aligning the salaries to what they truly should be uh, under enterprise fund. Okay. Uh, let's see. If something, there's two lines that are backwards in the book here. Which number? So sewer, so 6,411053 sewer engineering, about a quarter of the way down. Mm -hmm. That's the longevity. Okay, number. that makes sense. It's just flipped, these two. Yes, they're flipped. Uh, just the numbers. The line number, the line items are correct. Say, holy cow. <laughs> how, many, how many years seniority is that? <laughs> so, yeah, those are, those are reversed. Okay. So the, we have one mechanic, again, the, the sewer enterprise pay, uh, pays its, its way. Uh, sewer enterprise has one mechanic, that's what the sewer entry salary wages is, it's one mechanic assigned to sewer. You know, there's also one in water. But um, altogether there's six, basically six in this. Uh, including, um, including the supervisor. The number really hasn't changed, but. No, there's nothing been added. Okay, got it. Uh, if we have five total mechanics or six total mechanics, there's one that's one, one is uh, paid out of water, one's paid out of sewer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's the, that's why the number looks so much smaller than the 4290 and the general DPW budget at 344 or whatever it is. Um, let's see. Looks pretty, that, that looks okay. It looks pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's major, major changes at all. Like I said, with personnel moving around, some of the new employees have come aboard, so it's kind of like. It's almost like it was the equalizer because I kept scratching my head on some of the numbers. How come the same numbers work? Uh, so many changes, but that's how it worked out. So the next thing that I had questions on our one on, on page one ninety oh, one ninety three. Yep. Is the sludge disposal contract that increased? Green? Yeah, hundred grand. Yeah. 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 Um, and and we're gonna get the anaerobic digester and that's gonna be better. You mean the dewater, the press. The watering. Yeah. Um you, you think these numbers are astounding. Well, <laughs> we paid 2015, we paid 164000 for sludge disposal. Okay. Yeah. And and I'm being told now, see the the numbers estimates were given to me early. I have to get them early because budgets close on January. 14th. So numbers come out later that it could be more than that for next year. Um, so we're, we're hitting our target right now, but yeah. come spring on the current budget, um, it looks like we're going to be fine. Uh, but we tend to send more loads in the spring into summer. So I'm kind of, I got my fingers crossed that we're going to make it. Um, currently the, the, the dewatering project, um, it's uh it's, it's gone out to bid, it's out in the register for engineering and design. Uh, we select our own OPM in-house to conserve money. It'll be the engineering superintendent, Alan, 
Uh-huh. Um, he insisted on taking it over from me so he can have it. So. <laughs> uh, he really wanted to do it. So uh, good for him and it's a significant savings to the city. So um, <clears throat> we hope to have that project up and running. Um, please don't hold my feet to the fire because anything can happen between now and then. But um, I'm hoping next year at this time. Is a red dot? Oh, there's a red dot. Oh, she left. Came back. Oh, geez. Oh. Yeah, I'm hoping next year at this time we can have a grand opening and all see a sludge press. But so, so that, <laughs> that was my question. So, um, when it when is it that that will start? Do you think that de like I know you probably told us, this, but how, when we just voted money for the dewatering, when will that really? Come. So it depends on the engineering design. We're going out for that now. Yeah. We're going out to bid. Um, <clears throat> if they move the engineering and design into fall, my, my hope is that we can construct a lot of it this winter. Um, I really have high hopes of having this thing up and running when we're talking about my budget next year. And yeah. then, so this is the end, then what does this number go to? It's estimated at approximately half. Okay. Okay. Approximately half. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, estimated at this. Sorry, so, we're not. We're not we're just remembering that <laughs> as we yeah. voted for that. It'll be cut in half what expenses will go up 30%. Okay, <laughs> so, now, now we're going to go to half. It's only profit, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Actually, something totally unrelated, but we. Some of us started when COVID hit, and I know you used to do a, like a tour of facilities, which would be kind of interesting to mm. see. see some of this stuff since we, we see it in this in this book at some point. As a matter of fact, I think uh, <laughs> the mayor and I had that all set up and all of a sudden we got shut down. We were looking at uh, a tour on the trolley to all the water and facilities and all the DPW facilities as a tour. Um, you'd be pretty amazed walking in that plant how industrial it is and you'll say, wow, huh. this is where the money goes, <laughs> you know? Um, some pretty cool stuff if, if no one's ever seen it, you know. Hmm. Uh, but maybe we can get that. I'm not so sure between now and budget budget <laughs> vote, but yeah. no, that would be, yeah. be cool sometime to see it. <laughs> but it's best to do it on a Saturday morning. That's what we've found over the years. Uh, <laughs> we got to follow all the open meeting laws and hmm. all that good stuff too. Uh, so then, I think I think everything. Nothing really jumps. Uh, by the way, the sludge disposal okay. just kills me. Uh, what kills you? This the sludge sludge disposal. Uh, yes, two quarters. Yeah, two quarters. I mean, you look at it, the overall budget. It's a lot. It was an eighth of the budget or less back in 2016, yeah. and now mm -hmm. it's what a third of an overall sewer budget with all the construction and everything we do. Um, you might have just said this, but just said, what, what is that? What, what is that? What is the sign? The sludge? Yeah, we're paying to take it elsewhere. Yeah, it's, it's a byproduct of the, the wastewater treatment, treatment plant process. Um, it's basically biosolids, what's left over from the treatment with chlorination and everything is taken out. And it comes through at a certain thickness and it has to be taken to an anaerobic digester or to a treatment plant that has the capacity to, to treat it down to okay. water further. And I think I explained during the dewatering process, our sludge is so thick because it's a primary sludge, we have to add water to it. So Lowell will even accept it because it puts too, puts too much strain and torque on their equipment if it's too thick, you know. Um, so we have to add water to it. So we're paying for water to be thrown away in these loads. Paying twice. Yeah. Wow. Ninety percent. I think I sent the videos along at one point. Very uh -huh. short videos, but ninety percent of those loads, loads or thereabouts, is water we're paying to dispose of, and ten percent is the actual biosolids. Wow. And so the dewatering plant dewaters and. Yeah, we're gonna press. Uh, and they give it funny names. In, in, in my world, they call it cake. The cake is left over. Uh, it goes in, into the dumpster and we have to haul the cake. It may have to be to northern New Hampshire or Maine, but it's only one load every week, week and a half, as opposed to five loads, 9,000 gallons going to Lowell a week right now. 
We like it to be lush. Yes. We're paying for water. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Let's see. I make the joke that we're paying out our. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, it's getting late. <laughs> it's a long day for me too. Oh my God. Um, I, I'm gonna go. Can I go ahead on this? Because you, you on the on your debt service is about the same. That didn't go up, right? Correct. Okay. Which line are you? Well, I'm on 194 now. Wow. I'm on 194. The debt service stayed about the same, but the indirects I am quite curious about. Your indirect costs for health insurance with the same number of people is up 56,000. And um, that's your indirect health insurance. And actually, health insurance, as I said, oh. is up only 7 or 8 percent, 6 percent. I forget, I'll have to go back and look. And the indirects on the retirement are up, but I think their retirement is up about 8%. And then the indirect cost for other departments, that's GSET that we're paying for, is that correct? That GSET is being paid out of the indirects for the sewer? I have no idea. I don't figure the indirects and okay. who's paid out of there or what health insurance okay. is for. So, so that's for um, Diane Schindler. Check questions for Diana Schindler. Um, this is on page 195. It's the indirect cost on health insurance and the indirect for uh, another department. Yes, so the indirect costs are calculated based on the current um, enrollment, as I had said earlier, and also if there's any uh, vacancies at the time. Uh, Marlowe's departments have somewhat been a moving target because he's had vacancies that have been filled. So we use the health insurance census as of December, the actual health insurance census, uh, to come up with those estimates. And then, as I said, if we feel that there's additional um, positions to be filled, we'll add in a number for vacancies. And the 5965 line, the indirect cost for other departments. Um, oh, for other, so the indirect costs other departments is for the administrative overhead. So that's for shared HR, accounting, finance, the mayor, central, um, you know, procurement, anything that um, the enterprise departments use in the administrative um, roles. So it's a portion of those salaries. That's not the indirect, that's not the benefits for GSET. That's not the fringe benefits for GSET. No. Because they have I no don't. indirect, they, they have no indirect in their enterprise. I know that's not tonight. Right, that doesn't have anything to do with these. In, I mean, it doesn't have any, We these indirects are calculated based on the budgets of water and sewer as a percentage of the total operating budget. And then there's, um, then we use that percentage to apply to, as I said, the overhead, um, administrative overhead, the fringe benefits, um, and the, which is the health and life, the retirement and the Medicare. So it has nothing, to, I don't know what the GSET question is, Jenny, but it has nothing to do with GSET. I'm not sure what you're asking me about GSET. GSET okay. is not, if you're asking, GSET is not paying indirect costs. So GSET was not used in the indirect cost calculation because they're currently not paying indirect costs. Somebody's paying it then, right? Well, that, yeah, yeah, I thought we were told last year, I thought that's what we were told last year, that this was what we were paying for the indirects for the GSET, which have gone up. And I just... No, that's not correct. No these, these, these indirects are the other um, services that the water sewer enterprise uses. So that's HR, the mayor's office, central administration, the finance, accounting, the other administrative support services that service water and sewer. We we don't charge we don't charge costs for GSET. I don't know what GSET charges water and sewer if they charge them anything. Those would be direct costs from GSET. We don't charge any costs on behalf of GSET. 
Okay. So who is covering their indirect costs yeah, that's... for GSET? Or is it just being a split to high? I think that's the question is, if they're not paying into those, doesn't that just make the piece of the pie bigger for the ones who are paying into it? It means the city is covering those, those costs currently, yes. And because there was, it had something, and, and we should talk about this during GSET budget time because it is somewhat right. complicated, but it does have to do with an arrangement the city made because of a error with some debt service. And, and I'd be happy to explain that, but not during Marlowe's water sewer time. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to ask it again. <laughs> Write down that question. <laughs> Write down that question, Counselor. I will as well. Thank you. Okay. But in general, I'm just going to go just to say this again. In general, I would think that the indirect costs of health and life, et cetera, would be the employees who worked in that department. Is that not usually the case? Yes, that is the case. That is what we, how we determine. We use those actual employees. And then, as I said, if, there's, if those positions aren't all filled, then we do an estimate based on any vacancies. So those, so those people may have family plans. The insurance, their, our health insurance went up about 7%. Right. Okay. This is fifty thousand dollars more. I, yes, I don't even. Yeah. And it doesn't just it just for the health insurance. No, I just yeah. closed. My, I'm sorry, I'm, my cat's on my. Yeah, head. the the the. Um, I'm still wrapping my mind even around what this all is, but yeah, the fifty one thousand dollars more for health insurance. It went from one hundred and thirty six eight five one to one eighty seven eight one eight. Which is more than that's a fifty percent increase. 30, yeah, which is significately more than so forty percent yeah, yeah. increase. Well, it's possible. I, I don't know how the health insurance was calculated last year and on what what employees. I mean, I did have some of that information, but I didn't go back and verify everything. I just know how I calculated it this year. So okay. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if the number we have from last year that you're comparing the increase to is accurate because I don't know, you know, where the I can go back and look currently in Munis and see where the health insurance is trending for this department. I don't have that in front of me right now. Okay. Hey. All right. Water. Let's go into the water. Okay. Uh, eight other revenues. <laughs> Do you have a question? <laughs> no, it's not a question. This is an audible sound. I'm going to go back to see. <laughs> no, there's no thing that I have uh, <laughs> so how many let's go up to how many employees under water we have one two three four five six oh eight one two three we have it with you hmm. so yeah. The three way splits is where it gets really confusing. Uh, I mean, if I was to break out a spreadsheet, I'd say one third person water, you know, this person's name with one third, one third, one third. I think the most accurate way, this doesn't, this does not include managers, but the actual DPW workforce. Uh, there's 23 in the general budget, 11 in the sewer, 10 in the water, and two in the revolving. Four open to well, when I wrote this, it was four. Can, but I you say, can you say that again? So, the DPW, I would say, would say DPW 
contractual workers. It doesn't include SSEA or central maintenance. Okay. It's SSEA. Uh, Salary Scheduled Employees Association, the Supervisors Union. Okay. So this is, uh, there's 23 general employees, general budget that we're- 23 in general. Yeah, you know, 100, 11 sewer, 10 in water, two in the transfer station revolving, and I currently have four positions open, um, but that's not true. I can, when I wrote this, I currently have six positions open. Mm -hmm. and, but I have two offers out there waiting mm -hmm. for a response. So but that doesn't include, that breaks it out for the employees who are not split. When we get into the DPW engineering and they split three ways. So I think you know what I mean. I got yeah. three, three employees, one third, three, and then, you know, how do I make a whole person out of them? So mm -hmm. to speak, when I break that down for you. And I can, and I will, if you'd like me to. It's like a roadside car. Well, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Do you remember the roadside car? Yeah, okay. Nice, because okay. they laid it out by department and they would list each position, the salary, and then another column would say minus a grant. Or in this case, it might, you have like columns that would say this yeah. much paid from this one enterprise, this one from that. So you could actually look down really easily and see which ones are paid from what, all on one page. Are you talking like on Captain's budget? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think that's how they uplisted their other. Positions. So like when I build my budgets in Munis, it'll say deputy director split three ways mm -hmm. right after the name and whatnot. And then when you go to the water budget, it'll have the same name split three ways with the, with the same amount and then to, to you know, water sewer in general, the same amount of money you put the three together, that's the salary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So, I mean, that number doesn't add up to the, the 57 that I, right. 67 I totally have, but uh, that's the breakdown for just the W unit DPW. And you mentioned that this one was going to go down because of the shift in position. Yes. It went to solid waste and sewer, correct? Right. This one here went to vehicle maintenance and water. Okay. See how these reports have. Oh. Hmm. Okay, cool water go. Get on me. So we're talking about the 511, right? This one here is a little different because it, it splits two ways. So we're now going to split two ways. Uh, the wastewater treatment plant superintendent and the, um, the operations supervisor down at the, the treatment plant. So I think I have four or five employees that are split three ways and I have two employees that are split two ways because they deal with only drinking water and only wastewater. That's why they're split two ways. They don't do anything. In Okay. Um, I think there's anything in the auto budget that really jumps out. I'm remembering correctly, I did look through it quickly today. Water engineering again. That's that's a little bit of an increase in there. Okay. Yeah. That's what I had mentioned earlier about having to have a third party stamp plans like that an interconnected Montague. The state was willing enough to hang a pipe from the General Pierce Bridge and we didn't pay a dime. So uh, DEP highly recommends interconnects with other communities in an emergency. We can feed them water, they can feed us water. So we'll be working on that this year too, along with all the other bigger projects. And 551.11, the, the full-time salary Underwater distribution five one water fund salaries. Yeah, that's the other mechanic paid out of water. Got it. This was all contractual for water distribution on the 5111. Yes, this was this was all contractual. Um, 
through union negotiations is how the increase happens here. They were put in what we call the technical scale, the T scale. It takes five years to achieve the license now with a lot of education, a lot of hands on. So once those licenses are obtained, <clears throat> we really want to retain them and the institutional knowledge in our distribution crew. The crew that's out there in the middle of the night, in the middle of the winter, and there's water coming out of the road. So um, I didn't want to jinx us, so I'm going to move on. I just relived a couple of Julys ago, a flash in my um, Everything else, I mean, there were small decreases, small incre uh, increases. I knocked back Walgreens materials and tools of about 10,000. And the reason I did that is I, I tried to back out of that a little bit because <clears throat> I have my fingers crossed that the 400,000 comes through in the retained earnings for, for our capital. It's coming out of our retained earnings. So um, I, I did want to leave the at least 100, 110 in here because you just never know. Um, I wouldn't want to see two emergency meetings if something went really bad. At least I got the operating budget to go to and we could you know, refund it later out of retained earnings. So. Um, <clears throat> hydrants have gone up uh, pretty significantly per hydrant. I probably should increase that a little more, but I didn't. We have quite a few in stock, which is good. Um, uh, electricity in some of the plants has, has, has gone up pretty significant. Um, this past year was an anomaly. I have a lot of negative numbers on my budget right now for electricity for Melbourne. Um, because of the drought, the pumps were, were running all the time, trying to feed water, even though we're under a drought. We couldn't pull off uh, the Green River for a period of time because of really low flow. Um, Millbrook was running all the time. Those pumps were running. And Millbrook and um, Oak Hill were running all the time, so it really chewed up some electricity. Let's save a little of that Green River and we'll see how it works out. And it was an anomaly because it was the year we'd read, one of the biggest drought we've seen in how many years? Um, boy, I wish I could have seen that coming. Um, but it took us four years to get permitted to get that project done. It needed to be done. Uh, Let me ask just a very obvious question that I, just basic budget question. It's not necessarily DPW, but I just want to make sure that I'm following this in a way that I don't think I have been. So, our adopted budget is what we passed during budget season. Amended is if there's an additional uh, supplemental budget that council passes. And then every year there will be an actual amount, which we obviously don't yet have for fiscal year 2023. And that becomes the actual numbers. Is that right? Am I understanding that right? Is that the budget? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. 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 Okay. That is exactly right. <laughs> that is exactly right. Thanks. Just making sure I'm following. Page one ninety nine, sixty one dollars. Square. Sixty one dollars. Yes, number. Yeah, I think. Um, okay. These numbers are all pretty much in line, or, or a couple of thousand difference. Uh, laboratory, con laboratory contracted services, chemicals. There's a pretty good increase in chemicals along the way. I may have missed that in um, sewer also, but when we opened the chemical bids last June 20th, our chemicals for our water and sewer treatment literally doubled. So uh, those are in tough shape in the budget right now, but I think we're going to be okay. Chemicals and stuff like that were the biggest, they went up like 50%. Yeah, that's about in under under operating. If anybody has any questions, um, or water. and well, there's that service that interest. I don't know why the, I don't know why the half of it went up the multi-purpose loan, the water half of it went up, but not the sewer half. It's it, it they were both the same year, wasn't it? But it did. 
Let's just do. 9.59.22. Is that what you're looking at? Um, 59.16. Yeah. And you're able out of your retained earnings from these funds, you bought, there were three things that we purchased from retained earnings. Is that right? Uh, coming up. Well, like we're about to pass. Probably. That would be splendid if I could buy okay. this. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 but, um, but out of your retained earnings, which is why it matters to get yes. the whole thing. So I actually can't remember what they are offhand. But uh, 400000 in water main replacement right. was water retained earnings. Right. Uh, Millbrook Wells uh, Rehab, well number two was 45000 out of water retained. Right. And a dump truck. Placement dump truck yep. for the water, I mean, the sewer collections crew in the sewer battle yesterday. Right. And last year we bought a dump truck out of the water enterprise. Right. You know, $230,000 vehicle for paying cash. For that. So, and it, just to compliment you, it significantly has increased the retained earnings since you've been back. Uh, and, and the water and sewer. We didn't used to have. It yeah, that, um, but they've increased dramatically. Yeah, we were, we were pretty much in the red when I came back in 2018. Yeah, and it's nice to be able to purchase things. From and it's a, tough, it's a tough thing to do because you're constantly battling regulatory changes and yeah. uh, chemical, everything changes mm -hmm. constantly. I um, have a great staff to keep, keep things up to date, to keep me updated on things they're hearing and seeing, plus I get notified on a lot of stuff too, but... It was a lot of hard work the last four years to build those retained earnings. Um, right. We all know that a million dollars can go in a flash of a hat in water and sewer infrastructure, though. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And so, um, I get, what, what are they about the water and the sewer? You can go since that was. Uh, I didn't bring the current. That's okay. Uh, is it one, of the, one is like a million and a half, I think. Uh, yeah, right. one, 1. 1.35 was one and 1. 1.4, but. Okay. Um, Obviously, like we use some of that um, for this for yeah. tomorrow night's meeting too to offset the right. debt. Uh, right. But all right, any more questions on anything? On anything that we've talked about today? No. Okay. Well, you beat the last people. I beat them. Yes, you did beat the last. The last one we were out at like nine ten. So <laughs> which will be given? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> time in Canada. But if there is any follow-up questions, take different amounts of time because they have different people here. Uh, so if anyone's it's... up, any follow-up questions? Don't hesitate to oh, reach out. You know we won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I certainly, I certainly am not shy about my friends. I ask more than anyone that's coming. I thought you told me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I tell you, there'll be more questions to come. My homework is to find out about. <laughs> installed window cleaning equipment in the new library. Mayor, do you know anything about that? <laughs> I, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to find out. You know. find out later. Okay, so my next job is to say, um, there, uh, is there other business? Does anybody have any other business? Okay. Um, uh, next meeting is going to, well, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow night, which is city council, but the next meeting of this is going to be Monday, April 24th at 6 p.m. And that's going to be the operating budget on the schools. It's going to be a late night. Schools, <laughs> like technical schools, this, uh, some other, I don't like to call them smaller departments, but they, that's what it's listed as. The building inspector, the city clerk, the council on aging, energy, health, IT, library, recreation, parks, retirement, and veteran services. So um, on that happy note, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion oh. to adjourn. Okay, Catherine. Second. All right. And all in favor? Uh, all right. So we're adjourned at 8.38 p.m. All right. Good, Good night, night job, guys. Good night, everybody.